Ephesians chapter 6, from verse 10, we read through to verse 18. Ephesians chapter 6, verse 10. Finally, my brother. Finally. You see, when God is speaking and he says finally, he leaves the most important things for the last. Finally, my brethren, help me, what does he say next? Be strong in the Lord. Be strong. You see, it is not beautiful that you know how to be weak. There are people who are looking for sympathy, playing the victim all the time. It is not beautiful as a child of God that you are always projecting a posture of weakness. That you are always looking pitiful. Nobody can bless you out of pity. Pity and favor do not go together. It is good understanding that attracts favor. So to posture yourself as someone who's always needing help, always needing help, is not the way of God. It says, finally, my brethren, be strong, not in yourself. Not in your will, not in your skill. Be strong in the Lord. Yes. And in the power of his mind. And the power of his mind. Yes. Put on the whole armor of God. Put on the whole armor. Yes. That ye may be able to stand against the wiles of the devil. Yes. For we wrestle not against flesh For and blood. For we wrestle not against flesh and blood. Yes. But against principalities. Yes. Against powers. Yes. Against the rulers of darkness of this world. Yes. Against spiritual wickedness in high places. So there are spiritual wickedness in high places. Next verse. Wherefore, Wherefore, take unto you the whole armor of take God. Take unto the whole armor of God. That you may be able to withstand in the day. That you may day. be able to withstand on when? In the evil day. You see, the evil day is coming. The evil day. That is why you must be prepared for it. The evil day doesn't come with announcement. The evil day is not expected. It's a sudden day. A day that comes suddenly. And if you are not strong already, if you are not prepared already, then the person becomes a casualty. It says so that you'll be able to stand in the evil day. Yes. And having done all, have you have, after you have done all to stand, to stand, stand therefore. Stand again. Yes. Having your loins girt about your with truth. Your loins girt about with truth. Yes. And having on the breastplate of righteousness. Yes. And your feet shod with the preparation of the gospel. Of yes. Truth. Above all, yes. taking the shield of faith, yes. wherewith ye shall be able to quench all the fairy darts of the wicked, yes. and take the helmet of salvation, yes. and the sword of the Spirit, yes. which is the word of God, yes. praying always with all prayer and praying supplication. Praying always with all prayers and supplication, yes. In the Spirit. In the Spirit. And watching thereunto with all watching perseverance thereunto, yes. and supplication for yes. all sins. So the Bible says that the wicked has darts. Above all, taking out of the shield of faith that ye may be able to quench all the fiery darts of the wicked. Now, this morning we are looking very briefly at understanding spiritual warfare. Understanding spiritual warfare. And I want you to please follow me closely. I have an idea of what I'm talking about. By the reason of my privileged childhood, I have an idea of what I'm talking about. I've been there and now I'm here. I have an idea. I know what I'm talking about. You see, when Paul preached the way Paul preached, it was because he was coming from the other side. Now I'm preaching the way I'm preaching because of I'm coming from the other side. I know what it is. I know what I'm talking about. Now, there are two schools of thoughts when it comes to spiritual warfare, or three to be balanced. The first school of thoughts is the thoughts that glorifies the power of Satan. Uncle Joe, I don't know, I almost have to put this mic in my mouth before I feel I'm hearing myself. The other mic looks as if it's sounding better. The ones the SOJ is using. Or maybe let me increase the volume or something. The school of thoughts, yes, that glorifies the devil. There's a school of thoughts that attributes to Satan all the powers that they can attribute. It looks to them like Satan is very powerful. So anything that passes, even if ordinary cockroach passes, they see it as Satan. Every dream they dream, everything they see, everything is demonized. 
They have attributed so much power and authority to Satan. That's an extreme school of thought that needs to be corrected. There are people that no matter what you tell them, they believe that Satan is more powerful than a believer. That Satan can kill a believer. That Satan can destroy. That there's something they call the devil's day. But the Bible says this is the day that the Lord has made. I will rejoice. The devil does not make any day. The devil does not have any day. So the school of thought needs to be balanced with scriptures. In the book of Colossians chapter 2, media please help me. Colossians chapter 2, verse 15. Colossians 2, verse 15. What does it Having spoiled principalities and powers, he made a show of them openly. He made a show of them openly. Triumphing over them in Triumphing it. over them, having spoiled, having disgraced principalities and powers, having disgraced all the demons in hell. Jesus made an open show. I want to do a movie about what happened in hell. The movie is no, it's, it's, it's not, we don't have that movie yet. Everyone talks about Jesus Christ on the cross. And when you lose, nobody talks about what happened in hell. And I know it. I've had a glimpse of it. God, Jesus beat the devil. He beat him, my God. He grabbed him by his behavior like this. Dragged him. Dragged him. Hey, like a generator. Dragged him. Satan lost his teeth. Tell him. All the demons were crying. Our master. Our master. Finish him. Where, where, beat him. Ah, they beat him. They beat him and they didn't only beat him up. They pursued him out. Pursued him. He has no right even in hell. Let me read that scripture. Matthew chapter 28, verse 18. No, Revelation 1, 8. We'll come to Matthew 28, verse 18. Give me Revelation 1, chapter 1. Revelation chapter 1, verse 8. Let me chapter 1, verse 8. What does it say? I am Alpha and Omega. I am Alpha and Omega. The beginning and the end. The beginning and the end. Say the Lord. Say the Lord. Which is... And which was which is which when he said is that means he lived which was means that he died is he was his past tense and then what and which is to come which the is almighty. to come the almighty give me next verse i john no there's a part that says i hold with me the keys of hell death and hell is that verse eight give me check it for me he said hey, i am doing my look go to verse seven let's see verse seven is. what does verse seven say behold he cometh with clouds and every eye shall see him no that's not day. it that's not it check it for me he says, I am he, and I hold with me. 1 verse 18. Thank you. I am he that liveth. I am he. Yes, this is the one I'm looking for. I am he that liveth. And was dead. And I was dead. And behold. And behold. I am alive forever. I am alive forevermore. Amen. Amen. And have the keys of hell. So when Jesus went to hell, Collins, do you know what Jesus did? Satan used to be the landlord of hell. When the beating finished, ha, he collected the keys of hell from the hands of the devil. Hell and of death. Satan is a roaming homeless vagabond. He doesn't have a house. He doesn't even have a key. So as you see now, that's why Bible is going up and down. Seeking where he can rest. He will not rest in your house. No way to rest. So Satan has been dispossessed of his power. So for the school of thought that thought Satan has all power, this is a response. In Luke chapter 10, verse 19. Luke chapter 10, verse 19. What does he say? Behold, Luke, behold, I give unto you power. So having received power now, Jesus said, I give unto you power. Power to tread on serpents, to and tread on serpents and scorpions, and over all the and power. Over of all. How many power? All. How many powers? All. And some, how many powers? All. Including the village people powers. All powers, in exclusion of none. No. Jesus gave you the power to tread upon serpents and scorpions and over all the. Powers of the enemy. What does he say next? And nothing shall by any means nothing, hurt you. nothing, 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 nothing can hurt you. 
So I said, nothing can hurt me. Stop that fear, 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 shake, 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 shake. Nothing can hurt you. Nothing can hurt you. Why can nothing hurt you? Jesus gave you the power over the devil. You know, they don't used to give me food again in my dream, but when they used to bring food in my dream that time, and they don't put meat, I return it. I like meat. What insult? You serve me without meat. <sighs> Do you know who first served somebody food in the dream? You know It was Jesus that first served Peter. What did he serve him? It was meat. It was meat. So you cannot serve me and not follow the protocol. But someone else could have eaten that. And you woke up from that dream. <laughs> Nothing can hurt you. Nothing can hurt you. Nothing. See, he, he, he. I'm really, somebody came to meet me. Hey, he said, my landlord. My landlord, he said, your landlord. <laughs> your landlord said, hey, anybody that comes to that house. And you have come to take over the house. Imagine my landlord. Me. The Bible says, when the king sits on his throne, he scatters all evil with his eyes. A quan there. Me? I will not even pray. You are too small to determine my prayer schedule. I will not wake up one night because of you. A sleeping lion is a lion. Nothing. Nothing shall by any means. So that school of thought that glorifies Satan needs to be balanced with scriptures. Now, there's another school of thought that says there's nothing like warfare. That Jesus has done it all. That everything is now a bed of roses. Everything can be enjoyed. Everybody can begin to enjoy. Nothing is there. Satan is not there. There's no devil. He's been destroyed. He's been down one. Just keep on, man of God. Just enjoy. They just casualize it. There's another school of thought that needs to be balanced with scriptures. Because if there was no war, why then did they give us an armor? Why did he give you a breastplate of righteousness? Why did he give you the sword of spirit? Why did they give you a shield of faith? If nobody was going to be firing darts at you, it's because even though the devil has been defeated, he's not dead. Jesus did not kill the devil. He's alive. Even though he's been defeated. The Bible says that we wrestle not against flesh nor blood, but against principalities. So there's a wrestling going on. There's a wrestling going on. First Peter 5, verse 8 and 9. First Peter 5, 8 and 9. Give it to what I say. Be sober. Be sober. Be vigilant. Be vigilant. Because your adversary, the devil. Because your adversary, the meaning of adversary in, in English, common English, is your enemy. Your enemy, the devil. What's he doing? As a roaring lion, yes. walk it about. Yes. Seeking who he may devour. So when the Bible says that Satan is seeking whom he may devour, number one, you know that Satan can devour. Hmm? Number one is that we know that he can devour. But number two is that he cannot devour anybody, everybody. Because if he can devour everybody, he will not be seeking whom he may. Not that he can devour. A probability. Let me test this one, whether I can devour him. May is probability. He can devour, but he cannot devour everybody. There are people that Satan cannot devour. You are that kind of person. He cannot devour your finances. So your amen is not strong. Yeah. Verse 9, what does it say? Whom resist steadfast. Whom you resist steadfast. Put your feet down. You resist the devil. In faith. Whom you resist steadfast. You shut your door to the devil. You jam your door on his face. There is no place for you here, Satan. But the truth is that he is seeking whom he may devour. So Satan can devour. If you give him chance, he can devour. If you give him way, he can devour. But the Bible says we need 
to resist. In Ephesians chapter 4, I hope that's it. Ephesians chapter 4, verse 27. I hope that's it. Ephesians 4, 27. Neither give place to the devil. The Bible says not to give place to the devil. That means Satan can take a place if you give it to him. Please follow me closely this morning. I want to beg you. There's deliverance in the house this morning. Satan is looking for a place. Ephesians 4, 27 says, neither give place to the devil. You can decide that Satan will not have a place in your life. You can decide like that. I told you story before when he came after my wife's health. Did I hear that story before? And I said, Satan, this is my house. This is my house. There's no place for you here. You are a personal non grata. You are a criminal. If we see you, we kill you. Satan, there's no room for you here. Give no place. How do we give place to the devil? Number one. How do we give place to the devil? Number one. Continuous and willful sin. Continuous and willful, deliberate sin. Continuing sinning. If you continue to commit sin, if you continue to commit sin willfully, you are giving room to the devil. If you continue to commit sin, you are giving room to Satan. Jesus Christ says the devil, the Satan comes but to kill, sorry, to steal, to kill, and to destroy. If I keep giving the devil room in my life through continuous sinning, even though Jesus has died for me, even though Jesus paid the price for my life, I am going to give the devil an inroad into my life that gives him authority, to afflict me by his wicked ways because of my continuous sinning. There are people here who are resting on the grace of God and they use it as a platform to continue to sin. You, are, you don't know who you are dealing with. You don't know the devil. He hated you before you were born. When God gave him one room with Job, one day, one day, Bishop, one day, one day, God gave Satan one day. He didn't even say, let me use one year to show this guy paper. In one day, he killed all his children. One day, killed seven children. One day. One day, destroys the entire business. One day. Same day. Same day. In case so that God will not change his mind. He quick, the God says, don't touch his soul. He, he cannot touch his soul, but he buffeted his body with hemorrhoids. From the crown of his head to Job's feet. Full of sores. That's the best thing we are dealing with. He's a, what calls him the old dragon. He's a wicked devil. The moment you keep continuing to sin, you are playing around his premises. If he catch you once, you see, that day, you know you have been doing it a lot, you have been running away. You do it. Sage. He's watching you. He hates you. But God loves you more than Satan hates you. And as terrible as his hatred is, he cannot catch you from the hands of the Father. But if you keep going to his premises, you are making yourself vulnerable to his attacks. In the book of John, chapter 5, we're going to read from verse 1. The man was lame. John chapter 5, verse 1. What does it say? After this, yes. there was a feast of the Jews. Yes. And Jesus went up to Jerusalem. Verse 2. Now there is at Jerusalem there by is, the sheep yes. market a pool which is called in the Hebrew Bethesda, tongue. Bethesda, having five porches. porches. Next verse. In this lay a great multitude of impotent folk. Yes. Of blind, yes. halt, yes. withered, waiting yes. for the moving of the water. Yes. For an angel went down at a certain season. A into certain the pool. season, the angel will go there and shake and move the water. And anyone that jumps into that water, immediately the angel does that. The person is healed of this. Next verse, verse 5. And a certain man was there. Yes. Which had an infirmity 30, 30 and, eight, and years. 8 years. 
infirmity. People that they born, people that they born, have gone to university and they come back. They have done masters. People have studied medicine. You know that they, you know that they born in his presence. They have studied medicine. They have graduated. They are doing their PhD. Now. This guy was down there. Satan is not tired of tying anybody down. You see, this thing does not go with time. You have to cast it out. If you give Satan chance, he will tie you down for 38 years. He doesn't get tired. Ah, my hand is paining me. His hand does not pain him. He can hold anybody down so long as the person gives him room. 30 and 8. Can you beat that? Some of you are not to 38 years yet. 30 and 8 years. Sick. Sick. 30 and 8 years. Give me next verse. Verse 6. When Jesus saw him lie and knew that he had been now a long time in long that time, case, yes. Nine, verse he seven. said unto the, the important man answered him, Sir, yes. I have no man when the water is troubled to put me into the pool. Verse 8. But while I am coming, another step it down before me. Jesus said unto him, Rise, Jesus take said up unto him, Rise, and take up your bed. You see, there's a lot of story I would have loved to delve into, but I don't want to delve into because that's not the, that's not the focus of this. Sermon. Jesus says, Rise up, take up your bed. So Jesus Christ, who is the living water? This guy was waiting for that moving of the water. But Jesus is the living water. And the living water came, so you don't need to just come, rise up. That's how the man got healed. Now, the man went about asking him, how did you get healed? Who healed you? He didn't know Jesus. So it was just sheer mercy. If you look at the next, verse 14, Jesus gave us, gives us an insight as to why the man's life became like What did he say? After what Jesus found him Jesus in the temple. Jesus him and said, what? Behold, thou art made whole, thou sin art no made more. Whole. Sin no more. Lest a worse thing come unto thee. Lest a worse thing. So Jesus gives us an insight that it was sin that created the inroad for Satan in that man's life. He says, sin because you have not seen anything. It's 38 years. Satan can tie somebody down for 100 years. He said, a worse thing. There's still a worse thing. There's a worse thing. Worse than being sick for 38 years. That's the spiritual dealing with there's something that is worse. Jesus says, now that you are all sin no more, less a worse thing. Come on to it. Continuous and willful sin will put a man in a place where he's vulnerable to the attacks of the devil. People went to smoke till they got lung cancer. People misbehaved till they got sexual infected disease. People have lived their lives in a way that made them vulnerable to attacks. But Jesus says, sin no more. Sin no more. Even with my mercy, even with my compassion, you need to sin no more. Lest you keep giving Satan a room in your life. The Bible says, give no place to the devil. God is not impressed by how much you can dance around sin and not fall into it. You know, people, we see the pit of sin like this. I'm sorry. I'm speaking a lot of you about this morning. I'm sorry, please. One only need to be a shame. You see, you are, you are working like this. You are doing everything except intercourse. You see, you are doing everything like that. You are touching everything. You are doing everything except the real thing. It doesn't take Satan anything to pull you in. You cannot fall into a pit that you are not first close to. You cannot. As I'm talking to you now, there's a pit in London. I can never fall into it. Why can't I fall into it? From here? I can't fall into it. You cannot fall into a pit you did not first get close to. So if you fell into anything, you got close to it. Number one, willful. Number two, ignorance. Ignorance gives room or gives place to the devil. The first thing is ignorance of the war. Ignorance that there's a war going on. Hey, anyone that is ignorant of a war has already lost the war. There's a war going on and someone is ignorant of it. That ignorance is first a place for the devil. People that cannot discern that this is devil. This is devil. 
Jesus was able to discern when he saw the devil. Sometimes he can even form and hide in somebody like the spirit of prophecy. Like that girl that was prophesying after Paul. These are the men that show us the good things. They discern. There's no between false prophets. They not go there. I'll take too much time. That somebody is prophesying what is true does not make him a true prophet of God. What makes a man a true prophet of God that is living the word of God? Anybody can. I call you out. You have um, your name is uh, so so and so so and so. Say yes, 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 man of God, yes, yes. <laughs> do, do you tell me anything? Say no. Do I know if I say no? Say you live as so so. Say hey, man of God, yes sir, yes. And there was somebody shouting, Professor, you are not a Sunday school teacher. Tell them. And he says your number is zero zero. This is it. He says, hey. You don't you know your number before? What has he done? Don't you know your name before? You don't know your house address before? All those things that he told you, you think Satan does not know those things? You are dealing with familiar spirits. There's a true prophet, there's a true prophecy. I'm not de de demonizing the true. What I'm telling is that the fact that somebody is saying something that is true does not make him a true man of God. What makes a man a true man is that he lives in the will of God. Hmm? Because some of us like this, we are already going to see prophets. At this our age. At this your age like this, you are already visiting prophets. I'm surprised. I'm amazed. That people are young, 21, 22, they are already visiting prophets. I'm shocked. Somebody's attending a church like this and you are going up and down. Looking for prophecy. And you are in SLC. Just stay with that prophet. Because I cannot imagine. How? After all the word of God I'm teaching in this house. You left here and you are looking for prophecy up and down. You disgrace me. If I should see you there, I will beat you and that prophet. I'm embarrassed. Kai. You are in this kind of house and you are visiting prophets. And they are giving you prophecy. Some of you are taking pictures of men to prophets. Child of God. Child of God taking pictures of boys. Taking pictures of people. Help me pray on it. You are a disgrace. You are a disgrace. Taking pictures on them. How did you have five pictures with you? How did they reach up to five in your hands? How? Let's start from there. How did you, how did they meet? Say, hey, this one have this one. That one have this one. So now you turn yourself and they are collecting your money. Fight that you are not going to pay in the house of God. You pay to profit. That is shame. That is shame. The fact that someone says what is true, Satan can hide. You must be able to discern Satan. Jesus said that ought not this woman whom Satan has bound. This 18, 18 years. Satan can bind someone for 18 years. He says, ought not this woman to be delivered today being a Sabbath? Although it's see me, is this person not supposed to have rest today? Being the day of rest. Jesus saw that it was the spirit of Satan. He said, woman, thou art loosed from the spirit of infirmity. There is no medical cure for the spirit of infirmity. There is no medical scanning machine that can see the spirit of infirmity. No. They discern Satan. Ignorance that there's a war going on is to give room for Satan. In the book of 1 Thessalonians, First Thessalonians chapter 2, verse 18. First Thessalonians chapter 2. 1 Thessalonians 2, verse 18. Please follow me closely. 1 Thessalonians 2, verse 18. What does it say? Wherefore, Wherefore, we would have come unto you. We would have come unto you. Even I, Paul. Are you following this scripture very well? Do I have your attention, please? If you are at the top there, say, if you are top there, say, say yes. yes. I can't hear everybody. Say yes. yes. Now, Peter said we would have come. So I beg your pardon. Paul. We would have come unto you. Even I. Paul, Paul the Apostle, Paul the Apostle of Grace, 
all the ones that believe that Christ has done it all. I wanted to come to you, but why couldn't I come? Help me. Once and again, but Satan hindered us. Satan. Satani. You see, what you thought is that you thought you didn't have transport money. You were very quick to interpret things physically. The fact that something is physical does not mean it's natural. Satan said we wanted to come. But Satan. So Satan could hinder Paul. You thought they just changed the policy in the UK. When is your turn? That is when you wanted, when you almost got it, that they now said, okay, they don't want any, dep any dependence again. You don't know Satan. You thought that, okay, you just reached your turn, you finish. They have been applying people, they just said, hey, you know, it's okay. They just said, hey, you know, it's all right. No, we cannot take it. There's a particular fellow I know him very well. He might even listen to this. He had gone to apply for this. He wore a towel. He said, you move his car. When he, he had plenty of air. When he moved his car, there's a round, uh, the mark of the car was in his air. They deny him visa for that. He said, it's air. He it looks like he's a, he's a terrorist. So, <laughs> I, don't, I, don't know, I don't know why. I don't just like your face. You don't know Satan. No, as I'm talking, I'm saying, come on, come on, let's come off it, man. Come on. <laughs> you don't know. <laughs> uh, they said he looked like terrorists. He looked like from Iran. Are there not Iranians in America? Is there not an American embassy in Iran? Are there not granted people visa in Iran? Are there not granted people visa in Iran? They are granted people visa in Iraq. But they did not allow someone from Nigeria. He looked like Iran. You don't know Satan. You don't know Satan. The Bible says the weapons of our warfare are not carnal. Somebody has been seeing a pattern in your life. You are not quick to identify Satan. He likes to hide because people think there's no war. Some people are saying that they are not aware there's a spiritual war, a spiritual reign. That is more real than this physical realm. More real. More real. More real. I wanted to say something, but I might scare some of you. When my father brought Ogun into our house, you know what they call Ogun? Ah, Jesus, help me. They brought Ogun. Ogun is the god of iron, according to them. My father is adding to his collections of devils. He went and brought Ogun. What did we use to create that Ogun? We brought a car engine. Car engine. There's one part of the engine that is big, that is, 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 is one. So they just brought it. They put it down. They brought palm fronts. They cut it. They, they tied it around it. Hmm? I was there. Because I was also a priest. They, yes, I was there. They brought tortoise. That day, I ate tortoise. They brought it there. They took palm oil. They poured it there. They took a dog. They tied his neck, stretched it, slaughtered it, spilled his blood on that. I was there. I was about 13 years old. I was there. The moment they finished doing that thing, the man left. We had about seven dogs in our house. All of them ran out. All of them ran mad. All of all the seven dogs. I mean, I like dogs. I even took one. I went to hit him. But he ran mad. We are hitting. So we now, they now said that, ah, no, that you did not, we did not tell him that we have dogs in the compound. Ogun cannot live in the same house with dogs if they did not first do some ritual for the dogs. There's a spiritual realm that is realer than this physical realm. So when I some people just talk anyhow, it's because I will be laughing. <laughs> because they don't do anything. Some of them are fourth generation pastor kids. They are fifth. Their father has already destroyed everything. Me, I can't talk about that. 
say, no, pastor, <laughs> we're just here. We're just doing that. <laughs> it's because your father was a pastor. Your grandfather was a pastor. Your great-grandfather, you have a generation of pastors. Your father has destroyed all the, all the battles and gave you mantles. Me, my father was a native dog. I was initiated in him. I don't talk like that. You think that I will just leave Satan and start the church and it will be growing like this. Satan will now fold his hands. Me that they already said I was supposed to take over from my father. So you would think that you are here now. You think Satan, Satan just sat down and allowed me to just be going like that. So first thing like that, it just happened. Just bring strategies and schemes and just... <laughs> you are not married. You are not married. You are getting old. You are not married. Nobody in your family is married. You don't see Satan. I have the ability to see Satan fast. After service last Sunday, I walked out to that place, to the lobby, as I used to greet people. Greet people. Hello, how you doing? Hi, what's up? What's your sir? Fair, sir. People, somebody, pastor, pastor, pray for me. People do that. They ask me, pastor, please pray for me. I pray for them. My protocols are here. One guy walked up to me. As he walked up to me, he opened his mouth. As this. As he opened his mouth, I said, I saw Satan in his eyes. I said, take an appointment. See me in my office. I got him. He was this I got him to talk. When he entered my office, he's working in a good corporation. Lives in Lekki. So it's no money. When he sat down, I started telling him what Satan was doing with his life. He was shocked. He said, Pastor, it's true. I'm almost running mad. I said, they want to run you mad. But it's too late. I have found you. I discern Satan. There's a war going on. Our Christians don't understand spiritual warfare. Your life is not making progress and you are sleeping. You are trying things, you are trying things, nothing is working, and you are resting. You are very bold, oh. You are coming, I mean, your, your, it's your confidence for me. You, you, your life is not making headway, and you don't know. The Bible says, he pinched him, and he knew it did not. He does not know. The ignorance of the war is to give place to the devil. I have seen many things, and there are Christians today that casualize mountain of fire prayers. Me, day no fire, you are. People are here, and I know because they are Jesse. Don't let my dreadlocks fool you. I they pray. I will move my shirt to pray. Forget all this. Don't let these things deceive you. You don't want to see me. You don't want to see me. There is a war, and you have to be aware of it. You have to be aware of it. That things are not going the way they should is not normal. It's not normal. It's not normal. You are doing everything you can. You don't have anything to show for it. It's not normal. Number two, ignorance of the devil's strategy. You see, there's ignorance of the war. There's ignorance of the devil's strategy. Satan has a device that he used in 2 Corinthians chapter 2, verse 11. Lest Satan should get an advantage Lest of us. Lest Satan should get an advantage of us. For we are not ignorant of his devices. So to be ignorant of the devices of the devil is to give him room to take advantage of you. Satan has devices. Now, the reason why I've stayed in the New Testament is because somebody will come and say now that show me that in the New Testament, please. That's why I stay in the New Testament. It's not like I don't have quotes. If I go to the book of Isaiah for you now, you will see what I'll, I'll dig out. I have enough Old Testament scripture where I stay here so that people that are hyper, hypo, hyper, they can see that there's a balance to this thing. Let's set up this part speaking. Take advantage of us for we are not ignorant. Of his device. If you look at the preceding scripture, verse, what does verse 10 say? To whom you forgive anything, I forgive to also. To whom you forgive anything, I forgive also. For if I forgive anything, yes. to whom I forgave it for your sakes, forgive, yes. forgive I it in, in the person of Christ. Christ. Lest Satan. So unforgiveness becomes a device in the hands of Satan. Husband and wife, you people have agreed though that you are going to be praying together 
10 p.m. every night. By 9.50 p.m., fight will start. You and your fiancé, you say, please, I think we need to take our special life very seriously. I think we need to do this. It's time to begin to speak into our future. It's time to begin to speak into our children. It's time, please, let's get it right. Let's get it right now. This is the time. 10 p.m. I swear to God, by 9.50, you're already keeping malice. Am I saying the truth? <laughs> so you don't understand the devices of the devil. Satan knows that if there's malice in the house, he says your prayers can be hindered. That's a device. Unforgiveness, bitterness is a device of the devil. Among couples, among friends, in a church, unforgiveness, bitterness, where there's no law of God can flow. Satan knows. So he puts devices. If you think where well now, you find out where you have tried to make certain decisions. Certain decisions. At the point you're about to make that decision, then something happens that stops. Some of us, we always, at a time like this, we are on fire for God. We are burning for God. Father, in the name of Jesus, I just want to serve the Lord. I just want to serve God. You are my Father. I die for you. One guy will just chat you. Hey, pretty. Have you not noticed that it's every time you want to be serious with God? That somebody will now fall in love with you. That nobody sent you any message since all these days. It is when you now came to church and you came out, Pastor Philip. Oh, this word really touched me. I'm ready to change. It is that time that that person comes. It is that time that that guy texts you or that girl texts you and he swindles you off your commitment to God makes you high for like two weeks when you have lost the fuel of your passion then you people will now fight eh, it's okay, it's okay, let's say eh, block you, I block you, I block <laughs> by the time you block that person and you return what you had burning in your heart has died you don't know the devices Satan will keep doing what he's doing so long as it is working. If he did it for you last two years and it worked, he will do it again. So if he finds something that works, he will write your name in his diary and put that in there. You have to know what Satan uses against you. Every time. Every time. Every time you make a decision, that thing happens. I don't want to be, my time is almost up. Number three. Ignorance of what Jesus did. Ignorance of what Jesus did would give room to the devil. I spoke first about what Jesus did. He conquered the devil. But if you are ignorant of it, you cannot take advantage of what you are ignorant of. As a lawyer, sometimes when in court, in my days of litigation, and the lawyer is speaking, for another person and you we sit in the court you know that Kai this lawyer is spoiling this person's case the lawyer does not know how to use the law there's a way to use the law are you following my points this lawyer is not using the law where and you can sit and say Kai hey, yeah, hey, this guy can go to jail oh, hey. you can see all the lacuna you can see all the gap that you can take advantage of in the law but because the lawyer does not know it. Sometimes the judge is shaking his head. Ha! This guy will go to hell. He will go to, will go to jail. Even though the judge knows the law. You see, there's something we practice in Nigeria. We have the equisitorial. Help me, Alpha. Eh? Equisitorial and adversarial. So, equisitorial is that. Which one do we practice in Nigeria? So, what it means is that the judge, even though he knows the law, cannot descend into the arena of litigation. Let me explain. So the judge can sit down like this and know your law for you and know your case and know the strength of your case but is tied to the strength of your argument. Even though you know you could have had something better, you could have gotten something more, even though you know the law more. Even though the judge knows that you should not go to jail but because of the weakness of your argument. That's what happened. 
if you don't know, Proverbs 11, verse 19. Proverbs 11, verse 19. Proverbs 11, 19. As righteousness tended to life, so... No, 9, verse 9. And hypocrite with his mouth yes. destroyed his neighbor. Yes. But through knowledge, through knowledge shall the just be delivered. The Bible says that the just is delivered. Not through his justness. That the just is delivered because he knows. He knows. That an ignorant just will suffer. An ignorant just will suffer. Even though it's just. John chapter 8 verse 32 was very clear. It says you shall know the truth. And the truth that you know. The existence of the truth does not set you free. It is your knowledge of the truth. Says you. How did they set me? Listen to me. I faced the devil. I faced the devil. I wish I, I, honestly, I wish I could tell you guys. But some of you, your heart is not strong. Ah, I faced the devil. I faced the devil. I faced the devil. When, after my father died, my father died a few months after I gave my life to Christ. This story is sweet. My time has gone. Let me rush it. After my father died, I noticed everybody was dying very young in my father's house. Young, young. My father died 50. I told you guys to My father died 57. His mother died at 46. I didn't even know anyone before that. All of them had died. By the time I met my father, he was the oldest in the he was the oldest in the family. In his own line. Everyone had died. After I died, I had given my life to Christ. And I was praying in a room where I was praying. Listen to me. When I entered that room to pray that day, people upstairs cannot see me. We need to put screens upstairs. We need to put screens upstairs. The Lord lives on your heart. We need a 65 inches TV. Maybe two or three. 65 inches TV. Maybe two or three. The Lord lives on your heart, please. When my father died, I was praying in that room. You see, when I entered that room, I was praying. I could not, it was as though God was speaking to me, but I could not hear him clearly. So I said, Lord, I can't hear you clearly. And the Lord says, look back. And I looked back. And sitting on a chair, was a small demon that looked like a monkey. Now, I did not know why demons used to look like monkeys. It was when I listened to Kenneth again later, I heard him say over and over that demons appear appearing like a monkey. So, I was afraid. I said, God says, cast it out. I said, in the name of ah, the God, you about, ah, out. He just ran off. When he ran out, then I was hearing God. So, and now, you know, I'm looking for a reason to explain how I couldn't hear God play. See, the devil is the god of this world, and he's able to cause. He can be making noise. He can be doing all kinds of things to interact or destroy your environment. He's the god of this realm. Are you following my point? So God says, bring out the paper. I brought out the paper. Begin to draw. Thank God I could draw. He will show me a demon. I'll draw it. Now this is my father's house. I didn't say your family. This is my family. Show me a demon. I'll draw it. Show me a demon. I'll draw it. Show me a demon. I'll draw it. Show me four demons. I drew it. I drew it. I say yes. He said this one. Is this, this is his name. This is where it's located in your father's compound. This is what he did. This one. This is today. Comprehensive explanation. And I was writing it. I was writing it. I was writing it. I said, okay. And I was praying, Father, in the name of Jesus, help me. Help me. Help me. Demon of this morning. So I, when I was done, I was finished praying. I went. I saw my younger brother. I said, ah, God, show me something today. He said, hey, what's this? I said, forget. I think it's my mind. Ah, which can't tell me that because it was too detailed. It was too. It was like my. I was just imagining things. I said, "This is my mind." I used to imagine this. Go, go. What kind of thing is this? So I took the paper, rumpled it, threw it somewhere. We now slept that night. It was in the midnight that my brother shouted from the sleep. Hey! Ah, I said, "What?" Well, said, "This house is filled with demons. Demons everywhere." I said, "What?" Well, said, "How did you dream? How did you dream? Tell me the dream." He said, "In that dream, you were playing." You were praying in that room that you were praying. He said, one demon now came out. One demon now came out. I said, our secret is out. Our secret is out. And that demons were coming from every corner of the compound. He said, ah. He said, it was even where he stood that he just knew one circle like this. He said, they were going, they were going, they were going. I 
and they entered our living room and they had a meeting. And that there was a demon that stood. In, and when God was telling me, God said there was a demon. He called the demon of an eye. I said, God, what does he mean? God said, this demon is the one responsible for spiritual lethargy in your family. That's why when all of you go to campus, you're on fire. When you come back home, your spiritual life dies down. You see, you don't know that this is your prayerlessness. There's a demon assigned to ensure you don't pray. You think it's just, I just feel weak. You are... <laughs> <laughs> you are, there's, there's someone assigned to ensure you don't pray. So he said that demon, he said he has one big eye like this. He stood in front of the door. He was, I said, Wait! I ran to go and look for that paper. When I showed him, he almost ran out of the house. He said, Wait, did you see them? Wait, did you see them? This one, that one. This one. I said, Shh, shh, shh. Wait, what is that? Explain, explain. He said everything. I said, Very good. Don't tell any. In that vision, God had told me. You see that all those demons that my father was doing, all those idols, all those idols, that they are here, they are the least. You see all these witches? That's why I cannot see them least witches among past and principalities. They are just small, small, if in the testament, not really school, something. The real spirits are not seen. So God said, there's a covenant of death in your father's house. That covenant of death is that your father would have died at this certain age. But your father went and brought this demon from Benin Republic. This demon entered a transaction with the demon in your father's house. That it would extend his years for this amount of years on one condition. That everyone that he initiates into that idol worship enters the covenant of death with that other demon. So that's why when my father brought hey, when my father brought in that demon from the Benin Republic, he wanted to just make it a private prayer place for his family. They said, no, he must be bringing people. People must be coming from outside. People must be coming to worship it, that they cannot have it alone. Because he was just trying to protect his family. So that was what they were trying to do, by ensuring that they bring more people into that thing. I said, now I understand. I went to my pastor. I said, pastor, do you think I can deal with the devil in my father's house? You know, if you, if you come and meet me and I say, pastor, do you think I can deal with the devil in my father's house? I say, yes, you can deal with it. I will just walk away. I'll be, yes, you can. Yes, you can. So my pastor said, yes, now you can. I said, are you sure I can? He said, yes. So I will go to that place where God told me. I said, I know you can see. I know you are here. I said, but your days are over in my father's house. I prayed every day. Every day. Every day. I would wake up and pray and I would go there. You see, there's a place. If the Spirit of God can reside in the place, the Spirit of the devil can reside in the place. There's a place. I will speak to that thing every day. Every day. One day I woke up in the middle of the night. 1 a.m. I will never forget. I came out of my balcony. And the demon was speaking back to me audibly. I'm dealing with demons that have been in my father's house before I was born. But the Holy Ghost is older than the devil. No matter my age, I am older than that demon because of the one I have swallowed. I stood there and I began to speak. And that devil was talking back to me. All the ears on my head stood like this. Hey! I said, I'm finished. Hey! He was speaking to me in a language I could not hear. I was shaking. This is 1 a.m. in the night. Father! Something said, you better turn back and run away. Yeah. There is no armor for your back. There is no armor for the believer's back. If you turn your back, you make yourself vulnerable. So I stood my ground. Afraid, yes. Scared, yes. But he that lives in me is greater than he that lives in the world. He santo loco polotata. He clambambratea. Leave my brother's house. The time here is over. The next morning, I woke up to see a huge bed, physically, strange, looking like a mouse, dead. Hmm. So I took a stick and pushed it to the road. I wanted to see people's reactions. My people see they crossed to the other side. My uncle, who was 54, lived up to almost 80 before he died. I stood my ground. 
stood my ground. Enough is enough. Enough is enough. You are here, yet everything is not working in your house, and you are quiet. You are, your siblings don't have kids. Your siblings don't have husbands or wives. Everybody's on the same spot. Somebody's under the weight of drug addiction, under the, and you kept quiet. You kept quiet. Is instead of you to stand and get your prayer mantle and say, In this house, it's either me or you. Satan, you must leave this. Before the Bible says, well, We wrestle not against flesh nor blood. I wrestle with you today. Stood my ground. Stood my ground. And my family's free. My siblings have their, have their children. Everybody's doing well. Everybody's doing fantastic, and I'm excited about that. But only me and my brother knew. Only me and my brother knows. I said, my sisters listen to someone. Only me, only two of us knew the battle. But I stood alone. One man with God is a majority. You could stay with a thousand demons. One man with God. You cannot be a weakling. Look at your life. Look at your life. Is it only you? Is it only you? For our weapons of warfare are not carnal. Somebody opens his mouth. The whole place is filled of. That was when I knew the meaning of foul, foul, foul spirits. Foul. If the guy opens his mouth like this, you would think they open Sokawi. Open Sokawi. Heavy demonic affliction. If he opens his mouth like this, you will hear them. You will think that they have opened Sokawi. And someone says, you know, you have to change your mouthwash. Try to get a new. You don't, you don't know anything. You think this is a mouthwash problem? How will he get a job? How will he get a job like that? How will he get married? How? Every tree that my heavenly father has not planted, Jesus says, shall be rooted out. Satan so can plant cancer. He can plant fibroid. He can plant all kinds of stuff. You are the one that will say, no. This is my body. It is the temple of the Holy Ghost. You have no place in my body. Rise on your feet. In no skin there. Yahweh is about. Yahweh. Uraka pate. Esos of Olodo, Olodo, Olodo. Evram, Vam, 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 Vata. Eraka, Vam, 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 no place, no place, no place, no place for the devil. No, 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 Every planting of the devil, every tree, every tree, every tree, that strange illness, that strange sickness. Oh yeah, oh yeah, oh yeah, oh yeah, oh yeah, oh yeah. Enough is enough. Enough is enough. Enough is enough. Oh yeah. Ekwapa, ekete legete, embam bambe, 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 embam bambe,